Welcome back to the channel, everybody. As you can see, fall has arrived here in Northeast Ohio. Trees are starting to turn color. We've already had a couple uh, light frosts here, but I think we're supposed to get a pretty hard frost this weekend. So I figured it's time to do the end of season review for the trees. And you can see even the first uh, year trees that I've put in the ground, I've done quite well. Um, I'll start at the top here with the one that hasn't done all that well, the Dalmaty. Um, not really sure, maybe this just wasn't all that healthy when I put it in the ground, but uh, I think I'll still cover it and I'm, I guess we'll just see if it comes back in the springtime. Um, second one down here is uh, Dark Syrian and this one actually hasn't grown all that much either. Um, it has put out plenty of figs. I actually got a couple of ripe ones off of it, um, but very similar to Hardy Chicago, and this is supposed to be, I've heard it's um, possibly more hardy than uh, Hardy Chicago, so we'll, we'll see. This one I'll probably just do a real light uh, covering like I did last year with the mulch and see how well it does through the winter. Um, I put a couple new trees literally just the other day because um, I wanted them to have time to put their roots down and uh, more of just an experiment uh, with how well they do uh, with how small of a tree they are. You see, this is literally just a tiny little air layer. This is St. Martin. Um, so I'm just gonna cover this with a uh, nice heavy heap of straw and see how well it does over the winter. And then this one right here is uh, Vertolino. So uh, this, this was a rooted cutting and that other one was an air layer. So we'll see how well they do. Um, I have copies, so I'm obviously playing it safe with them, but uh, this is the unknown yellow Greek and uh, it has not grown all that well either. It had FMV pretty bad. You can see it on this side, but then this new shoot that's coming up actually isn't showing it. So um, it's supposed to be pretty hardy. That, that's uh, from Big Big Bill um, over at Off the Beaten Path. And uh, here, here's Malone. So um, it didn't ripen up any of its fruit just because this was a pretty small cutting that I put in the ground, rooted cutting, and um, it is very productive. I have, I've actually probably plucked a few of the, few off of this, but I knew it, it wasn't gonna have time to ripen up. This was real early for me last year um, in its first year, so when I had it in the pot. Uh, we'll see how well it does over the winter here, come next year. This is Grigio. Um, it hasn't really put all that many figs out. Uh, maybe this one right here. Again, this is just getting established this year, so it hasn't put any out. I like the big soft leaves on, on this tree. Here is uh, Campaneri, and just a nice big single leader. It actually did give me one uh, ripe fruit way down at the bottom, and uh, has just started to put these out. Obviously, it's not gonna ripen up for me, but uh, it's supposed to be pretty hardy, we'll see how well it does. I'm going to do uh, some different winterizing this year and uh, I'll obviously make a video and sh keep everybody up to date with what I'm doing. Um, so I'm gonna cover some different trees and try some different options. Try to get some more figs next year. Here is um, Bergen Unknown and uh, these figs are huge and they haven't even started swelling yet. This is supposed to be more of a mid-season fig. These didn't ripen up for me, but the tree grew very well, um, as you can see. Not really sure how I'll cover this one, but um, definitely want to get some more of these figs to ripen up for me. Next one down is uh, Italian 258. Just started to grow pretty well for me now. Um, took a little while for it to get established. This season was not very long. It's been a very weird year. Late late spring and uh, early fall, which uh, doesn't really happen all that often, so it's been a short season. Uh, here's uh, LSU Hollier. Has grown well, and uh, I've also heard this um, is, is a pretty hardy and good early variety, so we'll see how well that goes over the winter. Here is Condi which uh, I like to describe as one of the improved hardy Chicago types. Nice long neck on that one. 
Um, hasn't given me any, any ripe figs off of this, but again, these are pretty much all just getting established. And the ones that did have figs prior to me putting them in the ground, those are the ones that were able to ripen up. So not really saying anything about how early they are. And then uh, this was the small smith um, that was fighting FMV as well when I put it in. But you can see it's, it's healthy now, it's fighting it off. I should mention that none of these trees, I don't put any fertilizer down, including my uh, older trees. These are all just natural, just put in the ground, put some compost on the top, and then um, let them do their thing. Figs are pretty impressive with what they'll do if you just basically leave them alone, let them do their thing. Here is uh, Black Celeste. This actually had a fig at every node, and I've just been plugging it off to let it grow a little bit better. Again, this had some FMV, and it took some while for it to get established. So, next down is Thracus Aspera. Um, this is the supposedly a very, very hardy fig from uh, northern Greece, grows in the mountains there. And uh, it actually hasn't put any figs out at all, um, which is fine. I knew they weren't gonna have type time to ripen this year, but um, it's grown decently well. Hope to get some figs off of it next year. Um, Here's the monster of the first year trees, and it was obviously, it had a bigger head start if you go back and watch the first um, video that I put out. This is definitely the biggest tree that I put in the ground, but uh, it's got a nice shape to it. Kind of grows in um, more of a tree form than uh, a bush form. It hasn't put up any suckers or anything, but you can see that's a pretty hefty base to this tree, so I, I really, kind of expect good things from this moving forward. That's pretty similar to what the Colonel Lippmann Black Cross was, but I mean, this thing's put out many, many figs. None of them have ripened. Um, but yeah, it's supposed to be a very, very tasty little morsel. Um, and then here's the unknown early Adriatic from Bill. Uh, hasn't ripened up any figs as well, uh, but it has grown and um, pretty much a fig at every node. This is a very, very productive variety. I have very high hopes for it. Seems to be doing um, awesome. The fig was absolutely delicious last year, so we'll see how well it goes over winter. Um, here's Rosalino. Hasn't really put out any figs until just now. Um, has grown decently well, so as you can see, this fence is about six foot high. Nurtio uh, de Elba is probably over seven foot tall, and most of them are around five or six feet tall. Here's the one. Um, this one had FMV as well and just took forever to get established, but it's doing all right now, um, so it'll hopefully be established for next year. This tree really impressed me this year. This is called uh, Bacan or Bacane. It's a French fig, really big, really big leaf. It's super similar to Campaneri, um, kind of a honey berry fig. And um, you can see pretty much a fig at every node, very productive. It's got this bush down at the base because um, the, main, the main stem of it broke off uh, about a month ago and it was, it was easily one of my taller trees and pretty sad because I'm pretty sure it was gonna ripen up many figs. It, it was super early in putting them out. So uh, I think this may be one of the unsung heroes for Northern growers. Um, I guess we'll see how it does next year, but it, it seems to be super early and super productive. So uh, next is Azores Dark and uh, not really sure why I didn't put this tree in earlier. Again, this is like a improved hardy Chicago. Just a fig at every node, really productive, growing super well. But uh, we'll see how many we can actually ripen up next year. And then these are all the trees from the previous season. And you can see almost all of them are above the fence, have done really well, even with the super, super short, um, season that we've had so i'll get down to the ones that uh, actually have some figs on them but sister madeline green greek has not uh, ripened up any figs it's put out a few but 
uh, they're all small and I've been kind of fighting with plucking the suckers and trying to keep it keep it in check but this one wants to grow as a bush um, what is this this is Basilica Sika and uh, it's grown super well put out a ton of growth as you can see from the old the old growth if you can keep them growing in a single leader they really really thicken up nicely and I think that might be a key for northern growers I'm still trying to figure it out but um, it has this one fig from earlier this year but uh, as I said we're getting hard frost this weekend and I do not think I'm going to be getting anything that's hasn't already started to swell this is uh, Socorro Black and it has grown very well as well unfortunately it was just such a late start to the year I didn't get anything to ripen up for me and this is more of an early or a uh, mid-season fig so maybe one of the better figs that I've ever had as well it, it, it is a super super good fig so I gotta try to cover that one and get it to come out earlier this next season but here is the monster among the uh, trees this is green Michurinska. I've taken probably six or seven air layers off this tree and it just keeps growing it's crazy it just keeps putting out new growth um, so the root system is huge on this tree apparently and it just wants to grow and until gosh maybe the first week of August it started to put figs out so I think as far as like uh, basically the hormones in the tree so if, if the tree gets too big of a root system and the top growth dies back it, all it wants to do is put out new growth and it doesn't want to fruit so I'm going to try to cover these um, in different manners to try to keep a lot more of the top growth alive that way uh, they'll want a fruit earlier for me and I think that's definitely a key for at least getting ripe fruit off of these trees. Certainly for this variety here. There's other ones that will die back uh, and, and put out fruit sooner um, that don't really live their lives by the, that horm hormonal imbalance. But uh, Green Matrinsko is certainly one of them that needs to, needs to have that top growth in order to put figs out. Um, here's Cavalieri, which I replaced um, the Noir de Barbantane, which I want to put that fig back in ground because it is it is really good. And it, it's more of a mid-season high-end fig. So anyway, um, this has grown super well for me. It was a pretty small um, tree and I put it in late and uh, it's done very well. So hopefully you can get some more figs off that one. Uh, here's Gentile and as last year, I mean, this thing has grown super, super well with with what has died back from the original trunk. You can see it just came back from the ground. And as last year, it is super, super productive as well. So I got to try to keep this one alive more to give me some more fruit. Um, been gone through and been plucking off more of these figs. I just need to pluck all of them off now. That's what that latex is there. definitely need to do better in keeping them alive on the top growth uh, here's the unknown ice fig and this thing's gigantic as well you can see both of these are really really solid trunks haven't had any ripe figs off of this it's acting more like a smyrna like it needs to get pollinated um, some trees just take a few years to get established so we'll see Here's the Borgeso Grease, which I think is Borgeso Grease, not, this is not the uh, leaf pattern on the um, other Borgeso Grease that I know is the real one, so, and this thing hasn't put any figs out yet. I might end up just ripping this out and replacing it, just haven't gotten to it yet. Um, here's Fig, fig Oin, Verdito Del Nord. It's actually grown really well um, since I put it in the ground as well. Just a few suckers down here. Um, it actually hasn't put any. Oh, it's got a. It's got a tiny little fig node right there. Let's see. It. But um, definitely looking forward to getting some figs off of this tree. 
And here is Rockaway Green. Again, this may be the tallest of the trees that I have. Um, has this one fig from earlier this year, but it hasn't started to swell, so. Not gonna get that one. Um, certainly need to try to keep more of the top growth alive on this as well. Uh, Rondé Bordeaux, so this thing is so early. Uh, it, it seemed like it didn't put figs out until August, and it's starting to ripen up figs now, which is pretty amazing. Um, didn't put all that many figs out, kind of the hormonal imbalance uh, that we've been talking about, but here's a, here's a ripe fig right here. Little guy. Get the focus here. Not too bad. Um, when the figs ripen up here in this colder weather, they just don't uh, quite have that flavor. This has more of an acidic flavor. It's pretty interesting. Um, so it's good because it's a little bit different, but um, in a longer season, this is certainly gonna put out a lot of figs and do a lot better than it has. I think I've munched the rest of this. Um, here's Safrawi, which I'm really surprised that these haven't ripened up. Put these out a bunch earlier um, than a lot of the other figs, and it's supposed to be an early ripening fig. But, um, like I said, it hasn't ripened any figs yet, and it's kind of uh, medium vigor compared to a lot of the others. Uh, here's Paradiso Bronze VS, and it's got these few of these figs on here that have been here for a while and I actually was kind of expecting them to start swelling here pretty soon it looks like it's close but uh, like I said this is definitely a lower vigor tree it does not grow very much we'll see what I can do about uh, wrapping that one to keep it alive and then here's Lebanese green um, love the leaf pattern on this tree it actually looks a lot like uh, Cezac um, but here's the, the the lone fig on the tree, and you can see how tiny it is. And it's actually been this way for maybe close to a month. So it's certainly not a larger fig. Um, it is supposed to be premium, but uh, I definitely am going to need to wrap this one in order to get figs off of it. So we'll see what I can do here coming up. And then here's um, Colonel Lintman's Black Cross. And... Uh, this is the one that really survived well around, above the ground at the base of the old tree. You can see the old growth and then the, the bud that has come off of there as well as that side. But it's, it's interesting to see how little the growth is off of that old uh, frozen growth because you can see there, there is some damage on there. But um, I think there's just more vigor in these suckers that come off from lower down in the ground. So you can see this one actually put this fruit out. And this, this is starting to swell, this fruit. So uh, Colonel Lippmann Black Cross, I think, is, is very feasible to have this one ripen up in our area. Um, this one's close, but it's not starting to swell yet. So... Um, Maybe just some minimal coverage on this will will keep it through with uh, how well that survived last year. So we will see. Um, here's Vertal Long. Interesting growth. It uh, just got knocked over both of these, and they're just real low, low lying down down along the ground. Um, has put out quite a few figs, and they're larger. Um, this is a premium fig as well. This is very similar to uh, Rubato. Um, Italian fig that gets kind of like a purple blush as it um, ripens up and uh, it's a very good fig but uh, I think we'll see if I can just throw some straw on top of these and keep them keep them alive down close to the ground um, here's uh, Pellegrino which is basically long to oot um, but it splits a little bit less so it has a better skin um, Ross just recently put a video out about talking about how good long to oot is but it splits and then I said you know this is this is the answer this fig splits less and it's 
basically the same fig. Um, it definitely has done well, but I do need to try to keep it alive a little bit better. Um, hopefully we just don't have as hard of a winter this year and maybe have a little bit longer season. I'd get multiple figs off of that one with just, uh, you know, putting straw on the base. <laughs> uh, anyway, this is um, Nero 600. And this is a vigor vigorous grower, but uh, took took too long to put figs out. And it has put out a few, at least. Um, you can see the old growth that survived above the ground here and has grown out. Um, and then you've got the old little suckers down there. But again, um, just too little too late for that tree. Um, next few have actually given me quite a few figs so ter teramo is just so early and it has done so well here's a little ripe fig um i've gotten probably close to 10 figs off of this tree that have ripened up and uh it's, it, it just ripens them so so early that that is just it's worth growing and these figs are tasty too. A little figgy, a little caramely, a little honey. Um, they're good. So this is probably, I'd say my number two recommendation. And I'll get to my number one recommendation and it's surprisingly, it's not a tree that I'm even growing here on my property, but um, it's similar to this tree, which is Marseille Black VS that, um, I've probably gotten four or five figs off of this already. And as you can see, it's ripening pretty close to all of these right now. It kind of stops right here. But um, this is super similar to Hardy Chicago. I, I wouldn't say it's improved Hardy Chicago because the taste, is, at least in my zone, is not quite there. I'll go ahead and pick this one because it's very close to ripening where I like it. Um, and this one doesn't dry up quite as well as some of the other um, decent hardy Chicago's. It'll actually start to spoil instead of drying up the way you want it. As you can see, nice deep red, but um, the flavor is just not quite there. So um, the other tree that I was saying would be my number one recommendation for a northern grower is dark Portuguese. Uh, I put it in ground over at my mom's house and did absolutely no cover. I should cut to that at the end of this video and I'll just um, show you because I just got a quick ride down the road. But um, So hang out for the end of the video. I'll show you guys uh, dark Portuguese. Here's Improved Celeste. It actually hasn't put any figs out. Um, it, it, it had a really rough time uh, coming to life this spring, so I think I might have to cover this one a little bit more to get some more things off of it. And then here's Giacomo Rao, which um, is uh, medium vigor here. Here's a fig that's been neglected. Uh, go ahead and pick this. Some nice sugar spots on there. It's a honey fig, and I don't think I've actually tried this one yet. Really, really light honey. Um, in comparison to the Teramo, that's like more of a refreshing and not quite as intense flip taste. It's actually very good. And I'm not even a huge fan of these honey figs. Um, Italian honey, I, I just as soon, you know, throw that thing away as I would eat it, to be honest. Um, other than drying it up, it's probably, it's a lot better dried up, but um, this is a nice, good, refreshing fig. Kind of peachy, almost like a... Uh, had to take another bite. Um, what's the fig I'm thinking of? Um, Olympian. Almost like an Olympian. I know a lot of people have to say that has like a peachy taste, but this is like very, very mellow. It's pretty good. Anyway, um, this tree's done well. 
Um, I like the leaf on it. It's a bigger, smoother leaf. See kind of the bigger leaves down here. And as I said, it'll ripen a fig here with really, really minimal protection. So, uh, and this actually probably gets the least sunlight down here. It's kind of shaded out by some bigger uh, pine trees that I have around the front of the yard. So um, definitely a decent tree. And then here's Unknown Sheep's Head, which I think is actually like the original Hardy Chicago. They put this one fig out pretty early in the season and hasn't ripened it up. So from my experience, that's what Hardy Chicago has done for me in the past. Um, so there's the quick overview of the of the trees that I've got here. Maybe not so quick. Um, I will run over and I'll show you guys dark Portuguese. All right, so took a quick little ride over to my mom's house, it's literally about a minute drive down the road from where I live. And uh, here's the dark Portuguese that I planted for her last year. Um, and this is probably my number one um, recommendation for anybody to grow in a northern climate. It uh, has given us about 10 figs. And as you can see, I actually had a couple hanging on here that I wanted to taste. and somebody has stolen them off of the tree from me so uh, the animals like this one as well usually how you can tell it's a pretty good fig but um, it's ripened everything that I put out top to bottom these are actually starting to swell right now it's a double nut and uh, this fig is delicious it's a really really good fig this was planted and we did nothing to it absolutely no cover uh, it did die down to the ground and as you can see, it kind of has this natural border by these uh, bigger rocks here. And then this hill um, is kind of a natural border for it as well. But um, pretty me medium vigor, hasn't grown all that much, but from dieback, it put out, you know, 15 figs and it has ripened basically everything that was put out. So, it's done fantastically well, and like I said, this is one of the better figs that I've ever had. Um, it'll dry down on the tree, does so well, and it's, it's cheap to get, so um, everybody should get this fig and put it in the ground if you're in a northern climate. So uh, that'll conclude my video for you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I've got um, plenty more information that I want to get out there for as far as what I'm doing with my trees over the winter. Uh, hope everybody had a good season. See you soon.